G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy and you're watching Gallery Aquatica TV. So welcome to part two of our video series, The Great Tank Swap. In this series, we've taken an old tank, uh, a very large old tank that was slowly leaking. We've taken it out of its position and we put a new tank back in its place. Now, of course, the new tank had to come up over a balcony and we used a crane to get it into the house. Um, we put it into position and so now we've put all the fish and corals back into the tank and we're at the point that we're going to rescape the tank and finish getting the tank uh, ready and so that everything is uh, working as it needs to with the flow and the lighting. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is uh, put the rockwork back together and, and do the scape. So let's just have a look at the tank now. We've uh, really just chucked everything in for the time being. So it's a bit of a mess, but anyway, let's have a look and then we'll show you what we're gonna do. So as you can see, there are corals all over the place. Um, very few are in their proper upright position and unfortunately some of them are very close to each other and we're a bit worried about corals stinging each other. So it's important that we get everything back in place ASAP and to start with this, we, to do this we're going to take as many of the corals out of the tank as we can to give us some working space to create the bombings and the rock structure and we're going to use epoxy to hold everything in place and some glue to glue the corals in. So we'll start by taking out the corals and making a working space. So I'm going to start by siphoning some water from the tank into some buckets. So now we've filled the buckets with some water from the tank, I uh, put some corals from the tank into the buckets and this is really just to free up some space so that I've got more uh, working room in the tank. So we're going to use epoxy to stabilize the structures. Now this is the first structure we're going to stabilize. I've already applied a little bit of epoxy but uh, I need to ensure that this structure is well and truly stable because with the height of the tank, I want to build the structures up quite tall. So we're going to use Two Little Fishies Aquastic and this is my favourite epoxy because I really like the setting time, uh, the colour is good, it matches the rock work typically and it's just a very easy epoxy to use. Now the way I use this is I use about maybe up to a quarter of a stick per time. Being an epoxy, it's two parts. You can see the core is a grey, whereas the outer is that uh, maroon. And we just start by kneading this. And the idea is that we knead it until the colour is homogeneous, so that you don't see the streaks of grey through the maroon. And once it's homogeneous, we roll it. So you go from a sausage to a ball, a sausage to a ball. And typically I use short sausages like so. It's ideal that the ends aren't broken so that they're nice and smooth. Now you have a certain amount of time before this will start to harden. So you want to get in there ASAP and I'm being strategic with the location of the epoxy. It's difficult from this angle because this tank is tall but I'm finding the seam and I'm gently kneading the epoxy into the seam trying to get as much hold on the rock as possible. So that's about it. I'm going to use my second little short sausage in another location, further down this time. And I'm trying to uh, hold between this piece, this dead euphilia, and this rock. So again, on the seam, and just kneading it 
into position, pushing down onto both rocks so that when it dries, it's going to hold this structure very stable. Okay, so generally what I'll do is a couple of pieces of epoxy and then I might move on to another section of the tank uh, to give this some time so that when I come back to it, it is uh, well and truly hardened. And the, the more epoxy that you put onto a structure, the easier it is to put uh, more bits on. So we'll come back to this one soon. So now I have to find a way to create a bommy or two, or at least two bommies, out of this big pile of rock and coral. I'm gonna take a few more of these pieces of rock without coral on them out of the tank and I'm just gonna rest them up on the bridge of the tank bearing in mind that you don't want to knock them back into the tank onto corals and you don't want to put too much weight onto the bridges however I need a little bit more space so that I can start another bommy here And this is the other problem that we have, is that sometimes if I move a rock, it could have a collapse. And this is the risk that you run when you just pile rocks back into a tank. All right. So this will be my starting base. So I'll glue these two together. So this will be my, my base for this next bommy. I've got a bit of space between this bommy which we've done uh, earlier and this new one that we're about to create. But the problem that I have is it's gonna be very difficult to epoxy in this position. So I'm actually gonna cheat and this is probably, uh, it's not necessarily the cheapest way to go but I'm gonna use some coral glue so that I've got a good hole between these two rocks because again, being lower in the tank and the fact that we're gonna build on top of these rocks, the hole that we get is critical. So I'll get my coral glue. It's always nice to be able to create your structures out of the tank and drop them into place. And that does make it easier to uh, get epoxy or stone fix or the, whatever product you're using up and underneath but because we're working with live rock in an established tank it has to be done in tank and so that's why I'm using this shortcut of a big dollop of coral glue so I'll just find where it's sitting all right So it's this point which is making contact. And this is gonna be a lot of glue. And straight back down, making sure. That there's a good hold. So with this bommy that we're creating now, I'm going to link it to the next bommy um, in this direction so that there will be some added stability with epoxy um, given the fact that the two will be bridged. Now this will take quite a while for the glue to set. Um, I'm probably going to want to give it maybe half an hour. So this will give us an opportunity to go back to our uh, first bommy and put some more epoxy on that. So it's important to be strategic with exactly where the epoxy goes. So we've just come around the other side of the tank and we're gonna put some epoxy on this side as well. So in here, this is a little bit wobbly. So this is a difficult section. Given that it's wobbly, I'm just going slow and easy. I'm not putting a lot of force on the epoxy because 
if you're not careful with an unstable structure, you'll end up having it collapse, which is a disaster. And the second piece. So typically the more ambitious structures that you create will require more epoxy and are generally slower to uh, build given the fact that you need to uh, slowly add the epoxy as you get improved stability. My idea with this structure is to have ledges that come out in both directions. So we've got this one, uh, this chalice here and this second chalice in this direction and hopefully I'll be able to find something which will come out in another direction and also create more height with the structure. So we're really starting to see the structure develop of the overall tank and we've got a couple of the bombies which are getting close to being complete and you can see this one here I've actually joined two bombies together to create a large arch which will allow for a really nice swim through for the fish and there's a slight angle in this direction of the bommie and so my intention will be to have a similar bommie on the opposite angle next to that meeting up with our third bommie down the end here. So it's, it's much more difficult to create structures when you're using rocks with corals attached because every piece that you're gluing in, you have to allow for any corals that are on the rock so that they're still getting the requirements in terms of lighting and flow that they need. But uh, we've got some epoxy drying at the moment and some glue. So just whilst this is drying, we'll just have a look at some of the other things with this tank that we've done um, that have improved on the previous tank. So with the previous tank, the end section actually was made out of glass and one of the things we've changed is that with the new tank, we've created uh, a wood insert, which we've painted black to match the, uh, the rest of the cabinetry. And we've put that in place. This will create a more, uh, well, it means that the tank is gonna be more structurally sound. Um, hopefully this tank will last for double the length that the last one did. But it also means that we have a cavity down the back with which we can put our wave makers. And the perfect wave maker for this purpose are the Ecotech MP40s. We're going to put a second one on today. This is it. And the beauty of these uh, wave makers is that there is a wet side which goes in the tank. The wet side goes in the tank and the dry side is external. And so this dry side with the cable is going to sit down in that cavity so that the only thing that you can see in the tank is the very discreet wet side. So they're a really good wave maker and absolutely perfect for this application. So we've also improved on the plumbing with this setup. So previously we had two drainage lines and we now have got three drainage lines and everything has barrel unions which means that we can easily take off the plumbing and replace it or modify it if required. We also have a valve on the primary drain which allows us to uh, silence the overflow system and this is something that we'll work on in the future. We'll tune it so that there's absolutely minimal noise. And the last of the big changes that we've made to the, the new tank is our overflow system is the full length or width of the tank. Now, the reason why this is better than what we previously had is that in the last tank, the overflow was an internal overflow, but it was three quarters of the width of the tank and there were some very awkward sections beside the overflow box in the tank that were practically impossible to do anything with the scape. So this allows us more space, it's easier to work on, we've got the better plumbing, we've also got a dry uh, hole for the cables to go down. So it's a neater, much better functioning uh, plumbing system. So now that we're getting the bulk of the structure ready, 
I'm going to start putting some of the corals back in. And we're going to take this opportunity to uh, cut off some of the dead parts of the coral um, with some of the euphilia, just because of the, the way that they'll position, some of the heads haven't survived. So we're going to cut off the live heads and glue them in place. So I'm using these Aqua Vitro Crescent cutters and they give you a really strong cut and I find them quite good for, particularly for Para and Cora. So I'm going to try and cut as low as possible. There's one. Two. These really are the perfect tool for this job. Three. And so I'll cut off all these live ones and then we'll glue them in place. Perfect. So this section of rock is going to be our hammer garden and I've chosen this section because there are quite a few hammers and I want to keep them all together and I think that this will be the perfect area in terms of light and flow for hammers. Alright, so this is where I'm going to place this one. Large dollop of glue. And I want it to sit up, of course. Oops. So normally I would turn the flow off. I'm really regretting not turning it off right now. That was lucky. Like a little poached egg. So we're just about to call it a day for our rescape of this tank. Now I'm very happy with the way it's going. The fish are looking great. We haven't lost a single fish in this whole transfer process. The corals are also looking really good. They're starting to open up. They're already enjoying being glued into their new positions. We still have a few more corals that we're going to glue into place in the next few uh, days and weeks. And we also have a little bit left to do on the tank. We haven't had time today to do our new wave maker, our MP40 that we're going to install. We're also going to install some dosing vessels and just a few modifications to the tank. But we'll show you all of that in upcoming episodes. Uh, and I really hope you've enjoyed watching today's episode. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We really enjoy bringing these videos to you every week. So thanks for watching and happy reefing. That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's going to be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.